For more, we are joined by Christopher Field. He's a director of Stanford Woods Institute for the Environment at Stanford University. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time. First of all, I want to get your thoughts and your assessment of how serious the global waste or trash problem is and what are the consequences of dumping trash and, and improper waste management that worry you the most? Yeah, thank you. Plastic is a wonderful material. We get all kinds of great products from it, but we're terrible at dealing with it. Over the 70 years or so that we've made plastics, we've made more than one ton of plastic for every person who's alive today, over 9 billion tons of plastic, and much of it's in the environment. We need to get much better at making plastics that are suited for purpose, and we need to get much better at recycling the plastics when we're done using them. And which countries are sort of leading the way, if you like, in dealing with waste? And what are they doing right that other countries should be learning from? Well, if you look at the fraction of the plastics that go into unmanaged waste stream, there's a very strong relationship between a country's wealth and how well it does with plastic waste management. Singapore, for example, is one of the best in terms of not releasing plastics into the environment. But a poor country like Zimbabwe, for example, that doesn't have the infrastructure for doing the waste management has a plastic mismanagement rate that's about 100 times that of Singapore. So basically, we have a global situation in which the world's poor countries, the ones that have not had the opportunity and don't have the resources to develop careful waste management systems, are releasing vast amounts of plastic into the environment. Plastic that in general is produced in the rich world, but it's being released as mismanaged waste in the poor world. And Christopher, we've been hearing a lot of talks about uh, the need for transition to a more circular, more net zero uh, plastics industry, but it's not happening fast enough. I mean, what are the biggest hurdles that need to be overcome? Is it the financial constraints, um, unclear regulations, or, or mindset change? It, it, there, there are a whole bunch of challenges we face. As I mentioned, in poor countries, the primary challenge is simply a lack of infrastructure. In other cases, we really don't have appropriate technologies. One good example is many clothes are made from a combination of cotton and polyester, a plastic, and we don't have any good way to separate the polyester from the cotton. So all that material ends up in the landfill, even though there are some promising technologies that we could be developing. Overall, I would say the big problem is that we just need to prioritize making sure that plastic waste isn't mismanaged, that it's either recycled or incinerated or disposed permanently in safe and sanitary landfills. On an individual level then, reducing food or clothing waste might be the easiest places to start. What else should we be looking at to help ease the waste problem? Each of us can contribute in really important ways to decreasing the amount of plastic waste. And that ranges from things like uh, using uh, reusable sacks for grocery bags or reusable containers for the food that you take to, to work all the way to looking for um, material that's packaged when you have to purchase it in plastic, in plastic that can be recycled and reused. And almost every country now has good labeling that allows people to make informed decisions about the plastics that can be recycled. And in, in rich countries especially, we're seeing a lot of progress in terms of the diversion of plastic into recycling, which especially for the expensive plastic, like the kind that comes in soda bottles, can really be done very efficiently. And Chris, uh, we understand that G7 members have vowed to end uh, plastic pollution by 2040, this ahead of the, uh, the, the UN plastics treaty negotiations. But how significant uh, is this commitment? And will the treaty be in time uh, to make a significant difference? What are your thoughts? Well, well, it's it's really significant. Uh, plastics in the ocean are an especially big problem, and the most recent estimates are that by 2050, we might have more plastic in the ocean than we have fish. And decreasing the 
flow of plastic from the land to the oceans is 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 critically important for protecting the ocean and all of the organisms that live in it. And education plays an important role. What would you like to see done in this regard? Consumer awareness is always really important, but consumer awareness only works in a context where that awareness is matched by the resources and the capabilities to, to manage the material effectively. So I think that every country should be looking at creating not only education campaigns, but also the technical facilities to manage the waste sufficiently. And I also think that increasingly we ought to be looking at assistance with waste management as a real priority for international assistance. It's something that impacts all of us. And if we don't invest in waste management in the countries that don't have the capacity to do it now, uh, the waste really hurts all of us. All right, Christopher, thank you very much for your insight this morning. Christopher Field, Director of Stanford Woods Institute for the Environment at Stanford University.